Ooh, hey, hey. I'm back. I thought I'd make another video. Since I'm making videos. Uh, you know, sometimes I don't feel like making videos. So I thought I'd just, you know, throw another one in. A quick video. This is a video is about connecting the dots. And in order for me to do this, I have to remember. And... Let me see if I can tell this story where you understand it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. My mother and my sister and my younger brother, we used to walk up a hill going to church. So we went to church on Saturday. It was a whole new church, but they had Sabbath school, seven day uh, Sabbath. So this particular Saturday, we were walking up the hill, trying to get off the bus and going to the church. But that was a man. He looked like a Mexican man. This is in a black neighborhood. He was washing his car with his two little girls out there. And my mother spoke to him. He spoke to her. And I just said, ooh, a Mexican man living in this neighborhood. Went on to church, never thought about it. I'm about 15 or 16 years old, maybe. Okay, my mother said hi to this man. Okay, so there's one dot when I'm 16. See this man look like a Mexican and washing his car in front of his house with his two children. Little uh, kids, maybe three and one, maybe seven or eight, seven maybe. So anyway, my mother got sick, had her surgery for colon cancer on March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day, colon cancer. Oh, God, in the last stages, they gave her six months to live. March 17th, she had the surgery. That's the second dot. Okay, she died, just like they said, six and a half months later. On October the 10th. That's the third dot. Okay. During this time, I was in junior high school. And there was a woman who was our music teacher. She was young, beautiful, beautiful woman. And she, her name, I can't say her name. But anyway, she was our music teacher. And I was in a predominantly white school, but this lady was a beautiful black woman, and she was our music teacher, so we didn't have that many black teachers there. So that's the fourth guy, okay? So all of these things are happening in my life, but I'm not paying attention to it, because there's a dot over there, this happened, that happened, that happened. Okay, when I turned 27 years old, I met this man on the job, this man who was standing in front of his house washing his car. I ended up working with this man. And sad to say, uh, this illicit relationship got started. I still haven't connected any dots. Their relationship lasted for 20-something years. Still hadn't connected, but somewhere in between there, I thought, I said, hmm, his wife is the one who taught me music when I was in the eighth grade. Hmm, okay. Didn't think nothing about it. You know, small world. Then, I ended up moving. <laughs> moving in this house where he was washing his car. I still hadn't connected dot, the dots, but one day I was in the backyard of this house and I just say, I've seen this house before. And I said, oh, he is the man I saw when I was 17, 16 years old, walking up the hill of church. And this is the house and I'm living in it. Like what? Okay, let me tell you some more stuff about how these dots connected. Okay, this this man, he ended up getting sick. 
they told him he had colon cancer. He ends up having his surgery on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. I still didn't think anything about it. I said, oh, he's having that same surgery my mother had. And then after he got out of the hospital, I said, oh, that's the same day mama had her surgery. I said, but dang, they gave her six months to live, and they gave him six months to live. I said, oh, my God. As his illness went on, he and his, his wife, his wife and myself, we helped him as much as we can, could, and the relationship between the um, the wife, myself, and the husband was strange. But you know, if you were in Africa, wherever this, that wouldn't be no big deal. But he lingered on, lost a whole lot of weight, and you knew he was dying. And we said our goodbyes, and I talked to the wife, and she called me. This one day she called me, she said, I think he's leaving. We need to get him to the hospital. And I told her, I said, well, we need a man to do that. And I said, need to call an ambulance. So they took him to the hospital and gave him something to make him comfortable. But he died the same day my mother died, October the 10th. And when you when I look back on that situation, I think about my mother, and it, it, she'll never know that when we were walking up the hill, this very man she nodded and say good said good morning to. She didn't know the connection they would have. Both of y'all would have cancer, have surgery on the same day, and die the same day. They had no idea. And I had no idea that I would be living in that house. And I wrote about that house in my first book, Going Home Another Way. But I said all of this to connect these dots. Is Meditation is good to make you remember different situations. And when you relax, you'll say, huh. And when you connect the dots, you'll say that... Everything is in divine order. But the key is to remember. And I don't know, I can't tell people how to remember, but I think meditation and relaxation, and, and you don't have to always, when you meditate, you don't have to always, you know, uh, go deep and try to figure out something. You can just meditate on your life, just past what you did in the past and the people who came through your life. Think about them and maybe you'll find a dot and then that same person that you're thinking about, think about them in another situation and you might have another dot to place to connect. And when you connect all these dots, you'll see a web and a story, and it, it's a miracle. If you remember, I I don't know why I have such a good memory. I, I just, now some things I forget, but just, you know, nothing, things that don't amount to anything. You, you will remember, I remember, my, um, my cousin, I don't know if I said this before or not. <laughs> See, I can't remember that. <laughs> but my cousin, she's all going on. Seven, she's in her late seventies, but her brother, her brother died, and I, I was one. I was gonna call her and you know condolences, but I, I just kept putting it off, and then I called her, and she said, "Oh, Mary, I'm, I'm so glad you called," and she says, "I'm working on the obituary," and you probably don't know this, but. We had an older brother that died young. And I want to mention this brother in the obituary. But I can't remember his name. And <laughs> here I go. I said, oh, his name was Napoleon. And she said, Mary, it sure was. How do you remember that? I said, I don't know. I just remember them saying this. And Napoleon was born probably 
1943 or something like that, way before I was born, but I heard the story of what the people said his name was. And in my mind, ooh, Napoleon. I was I put that in my head. I stored it somewhere in my brain. But I was able to retrieve it and call her at the right time. The universe synchronized that stuff. So I called her and gave her the name of her older brother that died when he was a baby. So it's just, I don't know. I, I don't know how much memory I'll retain when I get older. You know, you have these, I'm not claiming Alzheimer or nothing, but you know, your, your short-term memory may go, but man, I have a great, a great long time remember memory, but I'm just saying, connecting the dots, and you may even see a purpose for people coming in and out of your life, and even if you do a past life regression, I, I do past life regression, and you can pull up some, some, I mean, fantastic and different things. You can, it'll help you to open up. So if you want a past life regression, you can uh, email me. I think my email, yeah, my email is on my uh, page that talks about me. And then my website, you can email me on my website, myameca.com. And that's on my uh my about me page so but past life regression i can do that for you and then after that i can show you how to do past life regressions on yourself because you know we have many lives and there are many dots to connect uh when you do past life regressions but the uh, regression usually take an hour and it's 75 dollars and it's just a um uh, it's not a deep hypnosis that I'm going to do on you, but it's, it's a relaxing hypnosis, and you will be able to go into your past life, and everything that you see, this is your past life. You, I'm not going to, you know, I'm just going to ask you questions once I think you are hypnotized enough, but when people do their past life regressions, I do tell them to ask spirit to give you a sign that this is true. Because when you're doing a past life regression, you'll see these things and say these things. But after you come out of the uh, hypnosis, you'll say, hmm, did I make that up or is that true? So I, I do tell you that the universe, the Akashic Records, will answer you and give you proof that this is your past life. So, but that can happen if you want to connect some dots. But the key is to relax and remember. Remember, okay? <laughs> this is my last video, and we'll talk again soon. Bye.